Hello, I am Matt. I am an ETM theorist, and today I saw the leak basically, and I decided that I would theorize it. Um, ironically, I found it last night, and I decided to theorize it this morning. Um, but I believe how people are theorizing it is wrong. Um, so I'm going to put a twist on it. Would actually link to the season and would actually make it make sense more. I believe that the whole season concept is mythology. It does link with the SAE and the Ultimate Evil being kind of mythical, and mythology can come into that. Anyway, let's get into this, um, and I'll explain what Gwell did and why Gwell, I believe, was wrong with her theory, but we'll get into it. Episode 1 and 2, Finding the Souls of Guests, it, quite, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of like reviving the dead. And actually, if this is correct, it makes sense why they were trapped and they couldn't leave it's because their souls have been binded to the island like um making a deal with the devil do you know when people say you, you, you've lost your soul you've lost that ability um i believe it's something like that and whatever evil that ultimate evil is it's got their souls um and they can't leave until they get them back and have to complete awesome challenges that get them all killed um so the first thing is finding the souls of guests. So it's two episode things. So the first one is finding them. The second one is also trying to find them. Maybe a couple of guests don't even have their souls yet and they have to go into the final challenge to get them. Loser is executed. Episode three, soul for gold. Um, I believe this could be Joey's soul. Um, of course, the finding the souls of the guests as such, but Joey is not as such a guest anymore. He's... All to these um, SAE, not really a guest, and I believe that he did lose his soul. Um, if this again, if this is all correct, I believe then Joey must have lost his soul um, when he inhabited the crystal. I believe the crystal may have taken his soul or cursed him, so he loses his soul, or it's somehow gone and he's dead again. We don't know that specifically, but I believe that Joey also lost his soul. So episode three would make sense. Why? He needs to get his soul back. And actually, the king it has something to do with may also give a bit of answers. King Midas, um, Greek mythology. Basically, everything he touched turns to gold. And I believe that is the reason why um, Joey needs to get it back. Maybe that crystal gave King Midas the, um, the curse or gave him Joey's spirit. And now he's having to get it back and cleanse whatever curse King Midas has. Um, and that's why the soul is for gold, so of course somebody's got to die for that soul. I don't know who it's going to be, but we'll see. If, and this is also on the premise if it was all stars. I'll point that out now. Episode 4, Find Me A Wife. A lot of Find Me A Wife is, again, I can't pinpoint a direct person. There's actually a lot, a lot of mythological um, gods and goddesses that actually follow this prowess. And I can't pinpoint a single one. Um... Like which one stands out, which one has like a curse or a background to it that would make sense within TTN. So I'm not even going to get into Find Me a Wife because there's too many. Um, where Gwell went, where Gwell said the Automaton Bride, um, Automaton Bride, yeah, that that would make sense there. Uh, with Gabby's death, then of course Soul for Gold makes sense of Timothy's death, and then from there it went downhill. We'll go on to episode five because I have a bit more about that. Episode five, the Black Knight. I, I love I love the title of it. Actually, it's one of my, I, if it's gonna come to one of my favorite episodes, that will probably be it. Um, the Black Knight um, in British kind of history, legends, and mythology, a Black Knight is a rogue knight, and I completely and utterly support that if it's true. Um, if the rogue, it may be a rogue knight asking for help to become a good knight or um, a knight nonetheless from the SAE could be could be um or even better um i think i may know who the knight could be sir lazarus now of course everyone knows oh it can't it, there were the lazarus coins of course and people may think but he's already been in there well he hasn't and sir lazarus is basically like a freedom fighter and in episode one season one you're gonna get sick and tired of me saying it um, there is a clip, of course, with the knight fighting, with the SAE symbol on his sword, I believe, and he had, of course, the helmet on, and if you actually look at the clothing, it's a little bit British, like Crusaders, and then add on to that, also links to Sir Lazarus, um, Knights Templar kind of guy. Um, if you don't know what the Knights Templar is, I recommend you research it, I'm not sitting here and telling everything about it. Um, 
so yeah, he was Knights Templar, and um, what he wore is actually reminiscent of the actual Sir Lazarus, um, who have been told in legends and histories. Episode 6, um, The Gorgon's Curse. Now, actually, Guadiano got this pretty much bang on with who it could be, Medusa. Medusa turns people into Gorgons and is a Gorgon, is cursed. Episode 1, Season 1, you could actually, with a thread pulling, you could say the, the guy looking in that little peepee hole um, could be them looking for Medusa, um, or it could be Episode 7, we'll get into that. However, Medusa basically is is cursed, of course, and turning people to stone. Maybe the guests may have to help Medusa get rid of the curse. Again, it's just like solving mini curses to get rid of the bigger curse. And that was the whole premise of season one, two, and three. I believe that could be a good theory to go by. Um, it does make sense with Medusa's character, trying to trust her, and things like that. I believe Medusa's curse could be a big one for this season. Episode 7, I've got a board here, I just want to point that out, so that's why I keep looking over there, because I'm looking at the board. Episode 7, The Genie's Lamp. I mean, if we're going all Aladdin on 2019, I am so happy. Like, you get Aladdin 1, they get Aladdin Real, and then you get now Aladdin here. I like it. I, if it's actually true, I like it. The Genie's Lamp. Um, Genie is actually corresponded to a spirit or a demon, so a spirit we can assume is good and then we can assume that the demon is bad um either way um demons um if you kill them once they're gone spirits are kind of they follow and if we actually go by spirits it could be the spirits of the lieutenant it could be the spirit of a dead guest like helping them along or even shane dawson or the sae the spirit the lamp um and actually, this one does not relate to greek mythology just like the black knight it links to another mythology like proper if you want to go british mythology you're going um and then you have jeans lamp of course links to islamic mythology um and actually apparently aladdin's also chinese so it could link to that mythology that i'm not even going to get into anyway with the genie and the lamp um i believe that it could link to season one episode one so we saw a guy reaching opening that little door trying to a little peeky hole try and get something yeah that could be him trying to get the lamp or it could be um next to sir lazarus knight um a lady with a staff like trying to fight off that also could be um a genie a genie is a spirit or it can even be a human or it, it's not immortal but it's it's powerful um and when researching this, something actually very interesting came up. Um, season 1, um, when I was actually looking at it, I don't remember the website, I'm sorry. I will, I will send proof of uh, purchase. Um, it basically said about ancient spirits, so the guests in their time periods, relatively basically ancient. Um, they, are let, they are allowed to wander in the night, do whatever, and then by morning they turn, they basically disappear, they, they go. And that is basically kind of the whole thing with in the night time they are known and in the daytime they are forgotten. Like in the 21st century they're forgotten and in the past they're stuck or who knows, they could have even turned to dust themselves. But that's the premise of Demons and Spirits with Genie's Lamp. And I, of course I'll go through the last one just quickly summarising it. Episode 8, um, Beware the Pirates. Well, there could be two, two people, not necessarily pirates, but also could have something to do with how the pirates operate. We have Dionysus, um, he was a pirate, he was basically like a powerful, uh, uh, it's Greek mythology by the way, it's powerful, he basically he disguised himself as a human and travelled as a mortal around the seas, it could be Poseidon, again Greek mythology, or it could even be Pele, sister, the goddess of water, I can't tell you what her name was, it's really hard to pronounce. All three of these are good, pe um, good not good people as so such, but people that could be to do with the pirates. Dionysus and uh, Pele's sister are evil, whereas Poseidon is good. Um, so I believe Poseidon is out of the question, but Dionysus and um, Pele's sister both link um, to be wearing the pirates. Um, by helping the pirates along, they may have some artifacts stolen from them that they have to go and get back, and maybe they may be chased around court, we don't know. But episode 9, the reason why I think it could be Pele's sister is ironically prehistoric evil, prehistoric mythology. We are looking back, 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 back in time. Um, and actually Pele, the goddess of Volcanus, is 
prehistoric mythology. Um, it is a prehistoric evil um, because of her curse. Um, and of course, if the crystal is off the island again, there's where the curse is from. Now, Pele, um, the, the reason why episode eight and nine now can link is because of the fight against water and then the fight against land and everything. Because you think you're safe from the water and then you're not safe on the land. And that's where episode nine and eight and nine link. And Beware the Pirates and the Prehistoric Evil on the Land both make sense. If it's true. Episode 10, um, Collector's Wrath. Now this one was, I'm going to capitalise that was, was the last episode um, apparently at the time. And the Collector's Wrath could be the person who is collecting the artefacts or something like that. And they don't have everything. Or something evil. Um... I, I can't pinpoint anyone in Greek or any mythology that has like a collector's wrath. I mean, we could even get into specifics like the Pandora box if you really, really wanted to pick up thin threads. Um, but with that one, I don't really know. I believe whatever's going to happen, it's going to have to involve artifacts or even that crystal. And um, the collector must have wrath, could be the ultimate evil, could be an evil that's just not happy full stop. Um, but if we link it to mythology, it could be the Pandora box, or it could be, um, another lieutenant that I have to find out. So, um, that actually could link to episode one, season one as well. The reason why, um, we see a man outside that church in season three, and he hasn't been seen yet. And if he's in season four, I'm guessing he's got something to do with that. Um, that man must, um, must have a, a sort of power um to be able to um kind of like travel as such because i mean he's in season three we never saw him in season three and he was behind that church he may have gone to season four and he must be that collector i don't know why he must have a wrath but he must have a wrath um could turn into a mythical being and try and kill them who knows um i can't really tell much on that but with mythology there's a lot of like as such collectors and trying to pinpoint which one is really hard um and then episode 11 came out and it's to do with um doing a house i don't remember the title um i didn't write that title down but i do i do believe it has something to do with the season one house now season one house it makes sense and i'm going to give you another movie completely not other related but it will make sense when i tell you it it's to do with it's, it's a movie one of my favorites actually called project Armanat. It is to do with some kids who basically discover their dad's time machine. Um, they use it and they go back in the past, go to the future, predict things. And everything's great and boogie until the future or the present gets altered. And now there's just evil. Um, people get hurt, people die, natural disaster just pick up. And they're basically fracturing the timeline. So basically they go back to where it all began during like a birthday party when the kid was young to stop his dad from doing what he was doing um, and explained to him and showed him because um, I believe the dad also died that day what is really sad um, but in episode 1, um, season 11 it could be the same thing going back to the season 11 house to stop whatever happening happening ever again because it says something about house um, so that's why I believe it could do or what could happen um, but I'm going to go through all the episodes again really quickly give a brief summary and then I will cut off. <laughs> so episode one, finding the souls of dead guests, of course, going to the era, finding the souls of the guests. That would be, that'll take two seasons, a lot of guests. Um, episode three, King Medias, um, the soul for gold, so getting Joey's soul, um, collecting artifact, of course. Episode four, finding a wife, could be, it's a god or a goddess trying to find their wife or finding a wife, and it will require something. Again, there's too many to look at. Episode five, Black Knight, King Lazarus, or a Rogue Knight, both may need the help of the guest for a sacrifice, of course. Um, episode 6, Medusa, to do with the Gorgon's Curse. Um, episode 7, to do with the Genie's Lamp, a demon or a spirit who is either going to haunt them or help them. Episode 8, Dionysus and the Pirates, beware the Pirates. Um, or it could be uh, Pele's sister, because episode 9 is Pele's um, himself, prehistoric evil. Number 10, this is the Collector's Wrath, could be the man we see in episode 3, or no, episode 1, season 1, um, behind the church. 
Um, or he could be another mythical being as such, a huge man or woman that's going to destroy them all. And in episode 11, the house. Uh, season 1 house to stop whatever's happening from ever happening again. That is the timeline. That's what, how I believe it could go. Of course, there are a lot of plot holes in my theory. I'm, I'm, I don't have the information to help with that. Um, however, I believe it is better and shows a bit more initiative than Gwol's theory that only probably made it to episode four and then collapsed for the rest of them. But for now, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, please subscribe. I will leave the link to our Discord server, so feel free to join and kind of join the party. Um, help out as such with some theories. If you like theorising, then I'm happy to listen to everyone. And we will see you in the next video. Goodbye.